Welcome to Face the Facts. No, you are not seeing uh, me from a regular chair. I am going to be doing this show from my bike. So we're going to do some multitasking here and get ready for, an, hopefully, a series-ending game for the Bruins tonight, and they can put Carolina to bed. Welcoming in on this show here, again, we are on our Zoom conference. We have Phil Healy the program coordinator from NORCAM. Yo, how's it going? Welcome, Phil. And then we have, don't poke the bear, <laughs> Tom Smith in the house. So, all in all, the Bruins have a 3-1 series lead against the Carolina Hurricanes. And it's been quite an exciting series, to tell you guys the truth. Um, I want to throw it over to Tom first and just, I know we got injuries. We have the Tuca story we got to talk about. But all in all, are you satisfied? I mean, honestly, after game three, I, I, I'm pleasantly surprised by what, how this team's doing right now. Phil, have oh, you been sorry, able to get a game four, After game four, I'm sorry. After game four. Phil, how about you? What have you, what have you seen so far from the series? I haven't been able to watch a lot uh, because of my personal schedule. But uh, from everything I – because I've been hearing more or less radio – uh, bitch, which is, I think listening to the playoffs on the radio is amazing. I always recommend it. I like the radio. <laughs> Tom doesn't I like, like it, yeah. I like the radio, guys. you got Bob Beers there. You've got, oh, what's his name? It's not Dave Gosher. It used to be him. He's now the Vegas announcer. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, I know what you're talking whatever about. Whatever his name is, he's very good. Um, I'm pleasantly surprised with three and one, okay? We've played, what is it, uh, game two, three, and four now. Without pasta, we're two and one, which is good. Um, we've got two wins without Tuka Rask, so that's another positive. So, all in all, my take here: Are the Bruins a better team with Rask? Yes, they are a better team with Rask. I will 100% come out and say that. But they are not a better team when Tuka does not want to show up, doesn't want to play, and is unmotivated. And you saw that from Game One and from Two. So. Give it to Halak. He's got experience. He's the best backup goalie in hockey. Now you just slide him into that starting role, and the players may rally around him. That's my take. Well, so I wouldn't say Tuco is unmotivated. Um, I heard today that he got a phone call from his wife while in the bubble at some point that they were, there were some medical issues going on with his daughter. Okay. And that's why he decided to leave. His head wasn't That's why, I, that's why I don't want to – some people have gone below the belt here with Tuca. You know, he doesn't want to play. This is what he does. He can't no, win. He, he absolutely he, wanted to this play. This has something to do with the family. He and absolutely you know what? wanted to play. Family comes first. Yeah, I don't understand. I mean, <clears throat> you should – I mean, the fact that they're involved in playing during this whole thing is kind of more uh, – it should tell you more than you need to. Whether they want to be there or not, or they feel obligated, it's one of those things. Like, oh, this is this whole thing is insane. But you know, here we are. Yeah, I like. I, go ahead, Tom. Tuca is not the kind of player that's just going to give up on the team. If he if he leaves, it's because he has a reason to. He absolutely no, loves. He, he absolutely loves if, playing for the team. If he's able to, would you welcome him back? Absolutely. Now, if he absolutely. is welcome back. I am assuming it has to be a 14-day quarantine. I'm assuming. Yeah, he would have to quarantine for a couple of days. I don't now, know. I, I don't know. I don't know what their quarantine is for the NHL, but I know it's a, a couple of days. Let's say that the Bruins get to the Eastern Conference Finals, and maybe they're game two into it, and maybe the series is tied one-one or down 0-2. If Rask is ready to go from that point, do you put him in? I don't. I don't. I think right now you have to give all your trust and all your support to Halak. And if you get Ras back, it's a welcome. It's a welcome addition back. But I don't think. I don't think we can be talking about Tuka Ras right now. All of the talk, all of the focus, and all of the attention needs to be on Yaroslav Halak. The team is playing absolutely incredible in front of them right now. It's insane how good they're playing right now. So let's talk about game four. 
So you had the series. It was two to one Bruins. And Pasta was not playing again. That was on Monday night. It was 2-0. They were down. They did not look very good those first two, heck, two and a half periods. It all changed after the unbelievable demolishing from Charlie McAvoy from, on Eric Stahl. By Stahl. Jordan Stahl. Jordan Stahl. Jordan Stahl. Jordan Stahl. Bye. Bye-bye. Best hit he's ever had in his NHL career. Best hit. Talk about rejuvenating, lifting that team up, and getting the job done. I mean, it was huge. The Brus goal, the Brus goal was huge, and then McAvoy makes that hit a couple minutes after, and that's when you knew the whole game was going to turn around. So the was the one that got the scoring off to the start. He had a great breakaway was taken down on the shot as well, too. And that t- that put it at two to one. The tying goal, uh, who scored that tying goal? Was it a defenseman? Clifton. Clifton, thank you. That's who was on the tip of my tongue. Clifton had that. And then right really after that, you had your next, your, your um, three to two goal. Um, who was that? I know goal four was DeBrusque. Was that Charlie Coyle? Or oh, was it Krejci? It was Krejci. It was Krejci. It was Krejci. So Krejci is having an, a monster series right now. No question asked that the best line for the Bruins has been line two. No this is, question. This is the best hockey I've seen from David Krejci in a long time. Well, he's if rested. I'm being if to I'm tell being you honest. the truth, he's rested. He's not hurt. You know, he needs to stay as healthy as he can be. And when he's healthy – you are seeing why he is one of the more underrated, probably like the, in a way, like a, an unsung superstar on the team. You know, Bergeron and Marchand and Pasta, they get all the credit. But flying under the radar all the time, David Krejci. Yep. The other thing I want to talk about, of course, is our Tuka Rask story. So uh, we woke up on – the start of game three, which was Saturday morning. At 12. It yep. was at 12 o'clock, and we woke up to breaking news for the Bruins. And all of a sudden, we see Tuka Rask out for rest of postseason. And I'm like, what? What the heck is this? Well, then we come out and we hear that there's some sort of a emergency going on with everything and that Rask has to go home. A lot of criticism for Rask. Is it warranted? I don't think it is. Nope. When you involve family into situations like this, you can't. You, can, you, you can't. He's doing the right thing. And all the people that want to be critical, that's not a fan. That's not a supportive uh, Boston Bruins uh, person that, I'm, that, that should be following the team at all. That's just unacceptable in my opinion. Rask has not been the problem on why you have not won a cup since 2011. He is not. So people need to get over it. Yeah. And I mean, there, there are a lot of guys that are going back home because their wives or girlfriends or whatever are pregnant. You don't hear people crying about them going home. Of course not. Of course I not. get that. He, now, I get that he's gone for the whole, the whole playoffs and not a couple days, but I mean, we have the, the best one, two tandem goaltenders in the league right now. And it's no, not like Halak hasn't had experience in the playoffs before. Nope. He's got, I believe his record's now 15 and 16 in his career. And he was able to lead last the Canadians in 2010 to the Eastern Conference Finals. So he's got the experience. You get a good team behind him. I still have plenty of faith in the team. My faith is not let up because Rask is not there. Now let's look ahead here to game five. We have a 3-1. Uh, yeah, game five. I had to count for a second there. Sorry. It must be all the sweating that I got going on from here. Again, yes, I am from my bike doing the show because I don't have any other time today to get my damn workout in. So sorry if you don't like it. Um, we need to prepare for game five. So I don't know, Tom, if you've checked Bruins updates or anything now because I haven't had a chance to. I've had a busy day. Is Pasta playing tonight? 
Um, I have no idea. Let me look. Talk about being prepared, huh? Jesus. Oh yeah, right. We're on. We're on top of it today. Well, here's the other question that I'll play. If Pasta is ready to play, do you play him? No. I wouldn't. I don't think I would either. Give him another thing to rest. You're already up 3-1. You've already been able to prove that you can get the job done the last two games without him. So give him another day of rest. Get him ready for the next round. Yep. Are we all in agreement that we feel the Bruins are going to get to the next round? Absolutely. So we do we think that today is going to be a win? Series yep. over. Okay. Yep. I'm Has feeling to be. the same way. Has to Bill, be. how about you? Because we love your opinion, too. I, yeah, of course. I gave the thumbs yes. up. I switched over to my cam while you weren't looking for the okay. one input piece of input. Gotcha. Well, I mean, if you think about it, if they don't win, it's a collapse, if they don't man. win, we have game six tomorrow. And the question would be, who would be in net tomorrow if we don't win? Block. You have to. You have to. You cannot put a guy in who's never played in a post in, in, in a NHL game. He hasn't. And I think kind of the upside to all of this, and this is when we get to the NBA, I'll talk to us a little bit more. Uh, you, everyone's playing on the same rink, pretty much. There's like another one in Edmonton, right? Yeah. But so like, yes. there's no real the home field or home ice advantage is almost nothing. You move. Yeah, it's move, move. Yeah. Point. So I mean, that's kind of interesting too. It's just more of a war of attrition, which makes these games kind of crazier, in my estimation. But yeah, even if they lose and they go to the next game, it's not like oh, we got to go, you know, uh, to the Carolinas and there's any jet lag or any stuff like that. But so I mean it's you know it's all on equal footing. As of That's right a good now, point. That's a good as point. of right now, Pasta is a game time decision. He is in warm ups right now, or we'll be getting ready for warm ups after this uh, game is done, and we will uh, hopefully see him on the ice today. So that's some encouraging news right there. Yeah. And the game is set for four twenty now this afternoon. Four twenty is now the time. Makes really sense. Jaffe. Billy Jaffe just came out with a tweet um, that said that Bruins pregame show is starting now, so in two minutes, and then face-off will be at 420. Because that game just ended, Tom, is that right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and, Tampa, and Tampa. Tampa won an OT. And Took Tampa was playing, uh, Tampa was playing Columbus. who again? Columbus. Okay, so Columbus is done. That's good news for the Bruins, because Columbus was the team last year that absolutely physically manhandled the team. So – I, I want I, I wanted Tampa. I wanted Tampa because the Bruins have Tampa's number. I'll take my chance with Tampa. Columbus just beat the crap out of us. So let's hope that Pasta is in the lineup here tonight and the Bruins are able to clinch this series, wrap it up, and they'll advance to the next round. Do we know who that's going to be yet? We won't know until – so Montreal and Philadelphia played tonight. Okay. And uh, – the Islanders weren't able to sweep the Caps last night. Correct. So that's another game that they have to play out. So who do we want from the Islanders, the Caps, the Philly, uh, the Philadelphia Flyers, and who's Philadelphia Flyers playing again? Canadians. Canadians. Who do we want? I take Tampa. Tampa. I would take Tampa if we were right. able to get them. I was thinking that might be the Eastern Conference Finals. I don't know. I mean, I would I would take either I would take either Tampa or um, actually, you know what? Honestly, I'd probably take Montreal. I'd rather take Montreal earlier than later if we needed to. Yep, I wouldn't mind Montreal at all either. I think the Bruins have their number. Anything else on the Bruins? Because I know Phil is anxiously awaiting to talk about the Celtics because they had a nice game one. But we have some unfortunate news that we have to talk about as well, too. Involved I heard in the that. I, um, I, got nothing, I got nothing on the Bruins. Unfortunately, I won't be able to give any live updates on the game while we're doing this show. But I know. That would be kind of cool if we were able to do that. But go I Bruins. do have a live update for the Red Sox. I don't care. And we're not talking about them on this show <laughs> at all. They are banned. They're winning. They're, banned. They're winning. Who cares? 
Lose. Give me the first round, first pick in the draft. Lose. <laughs> Loserville. <laughs> Last oh, night on Twitter, I, I wish John Henry's yacht sank. So that was my, oh, that was wait, my Twitter. Wait, I, do have, I do have something for hockey, though, before we get to uh, basketball. Yep. I, got, I got a great text a couple days ago with a okay. picture of Twitter. Of somebody oh, being... oh, 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 thank you. Yes, good, good. So what happened now? I got blocked by another person. Who? Dougie Hamilton. Really? <laughs> he blocked me. Why? What did you do? Asshole. Because he no called idea. him sackless. Oh, my God. How did you do it? How did you, like, did you just tag him? Man, or did you go right at this him? This wasn't or? recent. This wasn't recent. This oh. was a while ago. He actually, it looks like he has... Blocked all Bruins fans from his past. Oh, he yeah, because where is he now? Medium. He's with Carolina. Carolina, that's right, yeah. Soft wow. as a baby's bottom. Him and Matt Barnes, the two of them. Weird. So, yeah, I found that out before uh, the start of, uh, I think it was game three. So, just added a little fuel to me. Sure. What is, I, I got the tweet right here. What is what a sackless baby Dougie Hamilton is. Go cry in a corner, you spineless salamander. <laughs> oh, wow. What a – what a That was good. What a <laughs> call against salamanders, man. <laughs> He's just – he has no backbone. Yeah, but don't bring in the salamander into it. They don't deserve it. That's true. I they didn't do anything. Do yeah, I like salamanders, except for Dougie Hamilton. Well. Moving on, let's go to our Celtics. So, Phil, we had game one against Philly. Good win. Great, great job from Tatum and Brown. Decent. And, and, and even Kemba playing some good minutes. But, unfortunately, we got some very sad news about Gordon Hayward. I actually shed a tear about it. I did. Oh, yeah? I feel for the guy. I feel for the guy. Yeah, no, it's crazy. Um, I don't know if you want me to get right into it, but... Go right ahead, yeah. Right uh, ahead. Yeah, no, Gordon Hayward out for four weeks. Uh, when he first was down, a buddy of mine texted me. Because uh, the game was Monday night, and I actually was uh, covering a meeting for this for the station, yeah. and a buddy of mine told me, "Oh, uh, Gordon Hayward just got, you know, was down. It looks like he might have got hurt." I'm like, "Oh no!" But I saw that he was walking on it and work, walking to the, you know, the uh, was it the locker room? So I'm like, "Oh, it might not be that bad." I'm like, "Oh, ankle sprain. Sometimes they can just wrap it up and just like give him a shot and see what happens." But it looks like it's uh, there's some tear in there. <laughs> Yes, there is. Uh, and, you know, they say four weeks, but who knows? Because that brings them to the time where I think uh, another chi- uh, him and his wife were having a child. Or he, his wife was having a child, and he's just going to be there. I think this is their fifth child. Talk oh, about is it? Farm. Talk about building farm. an army, oh, yeah. And, and who knows Who knows how, uh, how mentally, how, how much is going to affect them mentally. Yeah, I mean, and he, again, that's he's going to have to he's yeah. going to have to co- go into quarantine if he's going home for surgery and all. So that's another thing you got to factor in. Well, I mean, that's actually that is already factored in when you're away, like for the for the time of which like they feel he's going to be ready. That quarantine time will already have passed. But um, yeah, it's still kind of one of those things where you didn't want. It's like, oh, great, another you know, uh, Celtic injury. Which actually, to be honest, we haven't had uh, too many knock on um, my desk here, but um, it still was, it's quite a blow because he was he's doing pretty well. He was back to kind of like um, Gordon Hayward of, of you know his youth, or just like yes, he when, he, when we signed I, him, what we signed him for, he was kind of doing. We were getting our money's worth for Gordon Hayward. It was it was yeah. showing that the, the player that we were expecting when we got him before his injury, um, definitely fully healed. The good thing. This is not the other foot that he had his problems with. Correct, yeah. So that's where I'm optimistic that he'll recover. Hopefully we'll see him back out there. Um, I'm not worried about this series. I do think the Celtics have enough uh, ammunition to get by Philly. Yeah, I think they do too, yeah. I am concerned on the bench, though. This greatly impacts the bench because I think this is going to put – either Robert Williams into a starting role or Marcus Smart. What do you like better? I mean, I think 
because uh, you can switch things up and you have Tice more in that role. And it, I mean, it takes away an offensive weapon no matter what. Well, there it does. And it, it obviously takes away from – and Gordon Hayward isn't a bad defensive player either. I, he was kind of knocked a little bit for that. But he's been doing pretty well. He's very long. He's very much like Jalen Brown in a lot of ways. Yep. Uh, they're very similar – and that where they're very flexible. So you lose a lot there being flexible with being a, a different type of longer wing guy who can uh, cover a lot of different players. And he can switch off with Embiid or double uh, whomever is uh, the five and playing on Embiid. So, yeah, it takes a lot away from him. It takes away a corner or two, another three-point threat, uh, threat, another drive threat, and just another shooter. So, I mean, I, w- I guess I would rather have – uh, I don't know. Maybe Mark, you have uh, Cantor in there, Cantor and, and and Tice, and then you go to Williams and switch it around and have Marcus Smart be your. I mean, he could be the starter, sure. It's not a bad option, but I mean that leaves your second lo- unit kind of depleted. A little limited, a yeah. Your second yeah. unit is a little limited. I mean, you I'm could, leaning towards. I'm leaning towards going with Smart. I think yeah. that I think that I think that him going into the starting role is fine. Um, He's done it before many times. Yeah. I mean, I, I feel like that's more valuable than just being a piece off the bench. As, as good as he is coming off the bench, I think that this this would help. And he might be able to handle the ball a little better in that position. But Gordon Hayward was also a good uh, plate setter. He would uh, he could see a play and he could diagnose it and he could set people up. And it's going to be a loss because it's like, you know, it's – I don't know. It's firepower. It's just like anything else. When you have, you had a great starting you five. You need depth. Your depth is so important, and that's something. Yeah, and they that didn't. For their bench, I mean, it's okay. It's not really a lot. Rudabaker is probably, I think, yeah, is it Rudabaker or, yeah, one of the. Uh, oh, I can't even. I, I, I don't think it's Rudabaker, but I think it's uh, number nine. Uh, Rondo's former number. But uh, number yeah, nine. I can't remember exactly who it is. But he's but great. He's actually a pretty good um, backup point guard. He's a decent shooter, and he can drive to the basket, and he, he can get to the line. And he's an older guy, so he's kind of a little wiser in that regard. Uh, so yeah, they got. I think this this series they can handle without Hayward going forward. It's going to be different, difficult, like yeah, against the, the Pacers, or like someone like or the Pacers the or the Raptors or the Bucks. Yeah. yeah. I think they've handled the Raptors pretty well this year. Actually, I don't know if they swept them. I think they might have. But I think with Gordon Hayward, that made things a lot easier. And Kevin Walker has to step up a bit. He, yeah, he does. They need, we need that need to be fully healthy. Well, not just the need. Just we need his shot selection to be a little better. Or him to just uh, nail them at the end of, uh, end of the game. I mean, they had that. They had a decent-sized lead, like 13-point lead, and they just let kind of – uh, slip away right at the end of the third. Yeah, it kind of like dwindled away a little bit. No, it did. They uh, it erased. It totally erased, and they were in the hole uh, at the beginning of the fourth quarter, and like going into uh, like uh, mid fourth quarter. And you know they they had their run, and they got the benefit of a couple calls, and the Celtics pulled one out. But they're going to need to like take this all seriously. They're going to need to hit the floor because a lot of them yeah. weren't hitting the floor. Yep. I, I think that's going to be a problem. They need to take this. I mean, seriously, and take yeah. get get to this uh, next 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 spot because one win in a series doesn't do much for me on this group. I need to see Eastern Conference Finals at minimum. I that's think that's my fair. Thought. I think that's fair, yeah. and I think without uh, Hayward there, it makes it a little more difficult. But I think they can get through it the does. first two rounds. I think the second round would be more of a slug, uh, or uh, it'll slog. be tougher. Yeah, yeah. I, tougher. I think I think this series that is going to be more of a slog too because of. Not having Hayward because it's, you know, it's one of those guys who he was, it, someone had an off night and he could put in like 50, I think he only had like 12 points, but he had like, I think he had like nine rebounds and like six assists or something before he got pulled out of the game. And it's something, but I think like if you get from uh, Jalen Brown, uh, Tatum and uh, Walker, you'll be all right. And if like Marcus Smart gives you a little bit, if you get a little bit from, some of the rookies or people off the bench. Even Grant Williams gives you a little something. Grant Williams was in there. He actually gave you a much-needed defensive uh, and kind of uh, a rebound boost. And that's kind of thing, too. Well, with this series, I think – I don't know. I mean, I don't want to dismiss Philadelphia because Embiid could just turn it on like that. And, you know, you have some shooters. Richardson's really good. And I want to give it Harris. five games. I'm going to give it five games. I'll give Philly at least one game to win. So I think this will go five games. Maybe tonight's one of those ones they'll lose. I don't know. But 
I think that we'll see the Celtics prevail in this first round, and then we'll get ready for round two, which should be in about 10 days or so. Yeah, it'll be great. And that could possibly be the Raptors or uh, – yeah, I think it will possibly be the Raptors, the Raptors or even or Milwaukee. The Milwaukee. I think. I think, I, I think I'd rather the Raptors, I think. I think that's where I'm Yeah, no, I, th- I would too. Uh, I think Milwaukee, without Hayward, it's going to be difficult. And, yep. But, I mean, I think they could take them because I don't think they have Blitzo at the moment. But I also like the – you know, Milwaukee lost their first game to Orlando. And Orlando isn't a slouch, even though they're right. the eighth seed. I think everything's like on the table. Everything's leveled off as we talk with it hockey. Is, it is. I, so, number one seeds don't mean anything, even number twos. It really doesn't. Really. You know, as we saw with the Bruins, I mean, they went from the number one seed from that President's Trophy, and they're sitting at the four. Doesn't yeah. really matter. Doesn't no. really matter. No, it's how you're playing so, now and how you deal with it. Anyways, it was nice not to talk about really anything on the Red Sox, so I greatly appreciate that. Um, but we're rooting for the Bruins to close off their series against Carolina this evening. And then we're hoping for the Celtics to continue on their path of winning ways. Anything else, gentlemen, before we wrap it up today? No. Uh, just, oh, God, I don't have anything. Oh, I, I was just going to say uh, Celtics game tonight at 630. Yep. Uh, not to say this episode will air <laughs> the same day. Right. But, I mean, we'll probably be talking about game two and maybe even game three. Uh, when we come on back the next, next show, week. on the next yeah. show that we do, but also, I really, hey, I'm re- I really like this format that we're doing too. You know, it's fun that we have these cool backgrounds. Oh yeah. I am planning to move to my office the next show that we do, so we'll have better backgrounds for myself and everything. So you don't have to see me sitting behind my bike doing my workout, and I'll try to plan that better. So thank you for bearing with me while I do that. Um, just so you know, I'm up to sixteen thousand steps on the day, so another yeah. healthy day in the life of me. And stay healthy, folks. Stay healthy. That's my memo and message of the day. Anything else, guys? No. Go Bruins. All right. I'm going to go hit the shower, so I will see you next time. We're not going into that camera thing, so I will see you next time here on another episode of Face the Facts. This Zoom is now closed. Bye-bye. 